Hey, what's up, everyone? Happy Friday. Happy Fourth of July weekend. It's over 90 degrees where I'm at right now. Let's see if you are out there. Be sure to say hi in the live chat. Today's topics, we'll be talking about PR stacking and SEO content silos with our very special guest, Terry Samuels. This is part two with Terry. Terry shared so much about advanced schema last time he was on. And we needed a part two to finish all the topics we wanted to talk about. So we're going to talk about PR stacking and SEO content silos today with our very special guest, Terry Samuels. guys let me know where you're watching from Carol Fry happy fourth weekend from Seattle Washington oh yeah happy Friday y'all Hi, Terry. Oh, yeah. Happy Friday, y'all. Today's topics, we'll be talking about PR stacking and SEO content silos with our very special guest today, the return of Terry Samuels. from Poland what's up vote from Poland our boy hobbies out from Poland we got about six more minutes to go be sure to get your shouts out let me know what's up Happy Friday, fellas. Fletcher, what's up, my man? My man, how are you doing today? Doing wonderful, doing wonderful. How are you? Good, good. Pretty hot out here. It's about 90 degrees. Yeah, it's about 107 here. <laughs> oh, man. 107. Yeah, but that's, we actually should be like 110. So we, we're actually lower than we should be. Oh, yeah. I see Terry in the back. Today's topics, we'll be talking about PR stacking and SEO content silos. Be sure to get your shouts out. We got about five more minutes to go. Holland, what's up, Dre, and welcome back, Terry. Thank you. says hi guys hi Victor 
Happy fourth weekend, y'all. If you're just tuning in, we got the return of Terry Samuels. We'll be talking about PR stacking and SEO content silos. If you missed the previous episode with Terry, we talked about advanced schema markup. We dropped so much knowledge bombs, but you couldn't fit in the topics we want else. We also want to talk about today. So we split it up into two. So Terry, I'm going to go ahead and kind of like still go over the same format. I'm going to go ahead and like, you know, ask you the same things just in case for those that haven't seen you and the other episode. And all right. All right, guys, we've got two and two and a half more minutes to go. Get your last minute shouts out. Next week, guys, is my three year anniversary episode. So I've been doing this for three years, guys. Be sure to tune in. Thank you, thank you. And I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. I'm going to try to interview myself live. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm going to go back and forth and play both parts. Let's see how that works, guys. But I have some ideas. All right, guys, we got less than two more minutes to go. Today's special guest and topic is Terry Samuels of Salterra. We'll be talking about PR stacking. Last week, we actually talked about press releases and how we should format them with Randy Rohde. So today, we'll have a strategy on PRS releases, which is called PR stacking. For those that don't know and want to know more about it, stay tuned. And we'll be talking about content silos. All right, guys, we've got one more minute to go. I'm going to go ahead and start getting things ready here. And I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute, Terry. And I'm going to unmute you when I get to introduce you in. Hey. All right. Over 15 years in the game, so he knows all about it. Master the art of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off page to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started, a self employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to another episode of the SEO video show where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre DeVera, aka Dre, and I curate SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest and my guest this week is the founder of Salterra the return of Terry Samuels before we get started let's say what's up to everyone in chat I see Victor Nesto Kobe Vote Fletcher Carol Luther Lucy welcome welcome everyone please support the channel by liking subscribing and hitting on the notification bell 
now let's get on with the show. Hey Dre, why do they call it the mini panda update? Because it finds content that's a little bear. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Google released a new video on semantic HTML. Let's check this one out. And the simple answer is yes. Semantic HTML does help to understand a page. However, it's not a magical multiplier for making a website rank higher. Taking a step back, semantic HTML is when HTML elements are used to structure your content based on each element's meaning, not their appearance. For example, Instead of just making text bigger, you might use a heading HTML element. There's a lot of nuance here, so this is a simplified version for SEO purposes. Some examples of what helps Google are blocks of text with appropriate headings, like I mentioned, images embedded near their textual context, table elements for tabular data and not to position text, links that use anchor tags and not on-click handlers. It would be too much to go into all HTML elements here, and there's a lot of documentation on this. Be aware that our systems aren't picky regarding similar elements. For example, when grouping text, most elements are treated the same, regardless of whether it's a section, an article, or a div element. So in short, please use semantic HTML. It's not a ranking factor, but it can help our systems to understand your content better. If this doesn't help with rankings, do you know what does? Keyword optimized HTML, like strategically measuring the keywords and variations in your div tags. The only software I know that can measure this is Quora by Ted Kabaitis. Want to start your SEO agency? Nathan Gotch shares his seven part SEO system. Let's check this one out. SEO as a whole is one system, but it's actually one system within a broader system, which you could say is search marketing. And then you go even further out and say it's actually a system within digital marketing. And then you go even further and say that digital marketing is a system within marketing. And then, you know, we keep going further and further out. But in the case of this example, SEO is the system. Okay. Next is processes. So within a system, you have many different parts. So in the case of SEO, we have keyword research, we have doing audits, we have link building, we have on-page SEO, the, the list goes on and on. So we have all these different processes. And the reason why keyword research is a process is because within keyword research, we have procedures. So procedures are the actual step-by-step -step checklist that you need to follow to that helps integrate and ultimately it's the building block of a process. So within keyword research, we might have, you know, find existing keywords, find low hanging fruits, uh, find clustering opportunities. These are all procedures and very specific to, you know, this overall process. And then to support these three different things, we have templates, we have reference docs, we have demonstrations. You need to actually create video to show people how to actually do that task. And then we have tools. So these are the seven parts of a successful SEO system or even just systems in general. Systems and uh, standard operating procedures, SOPs, can also be applied to in-house SEO. When you work at big companies like with many stakeholders, the SEO team can be treated as an in-house agency. Okay, documenting workflows in, in a, is a great way to stay organized and help you onboard new members to your team quickly. Here's a quick Google business profile photo hack. Let's check this one out. You must try this cool hack if Google won't let you change the cover photo on your Google business profile. Log into your Google business profile, go to the search interface and look for the edit info icon. Click on it. A pop-up window will appear. Click on the contact tab. In the contact tab, find the website field and click on it to edit it. A dialog box will show up saying you have a website created with Google. Click on the manage button. You'll be taken to a website that Google automatically creates for you when you claim a listing. Look for the option to edit the header photo and pick a picture you want as your cover photo. Wait for about a minute or so and boom, your selected picture will magically become the cover photo on your listing. Remember, this is only a hack so things could change down the road, but give it a shot and enjoy your new cover photo. I wanted to share this because I was recently uploading and deleting photos until I got the right one to show up on that cover photo. So this is a pretty cool hack to save you some time. Ross Simmons reminds us what great content should be about. Let's check it out. 
This is the biggest mistake that I see small business owners make when it comes to managing their own social media accounts. Every single time that they put out a post, they're simply telling people about their new deal, their new discount, their new product, their new feature, instead of talking about themselves telling the story about why they created this thing, talking about their customers, talking about the experience that they've just created, or talking about something that they're offering that is new, but ultimately a little bit different in the idea that inspired that. Take people on a journey, tell people a story, and don't get it twisted. You might think that you're boring, but literally tons of people who go to your restaurant, go to your storefront, go to your business, want to feel connected to the owner. They want to feel connected to you. So instead of thinking that the only reason why people are there are to buy your product, understand that people actually wanna hear the story of why you've created this thing, what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and how you can add value to their life as well. I always share a great quote from Ross all the time. It's called, create once and distribute forever. Do you know what else you can distribute? Press releases. This brings me to my favorite part of the show. Please ask questions and I will address them in the order that they receive. Please support the channel while I get things ready here. Terry is the owner of Saltero Digital Webmore Services. He is the host of the SQL Spring Training and owner of Round Table SQL Mastermind Series. He has spoken at conferences over the last four years, including SQL Spring Training, SQL Rockstars, SQL Master Summit, and Mastermind in Hell. He has over 12 years' experience in digital marketing. He is an authority in on page SEO, siloing, and advanced schema markup. Please welcome the return of Terry Samuels. Terry, my man, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Love the show. So I was I was excited when you asked me. Love it. Love it. Thank you again. Thank you again. Uh, I'm going to get right to it. This is the first question I ask all my SEO professionals that come on here in one minute or less. How does Terry get ranking on page one of Google? Content. Lots of good content. Lots of good, you know, content around the intent before the search. Content that can silo each other content to build up power and authority. And then you'll event you'll eventually be on the first page of Google. Love that, love that. Let me go ahead and rewind this real quick. Take us all the way back to 12 years ago. How'd you get uh, first into SEO? Um, I started um, doing web development again after we lost our real estate company. And I started with churches, charities, and foundations as my niche. And one of my cancer charities that I'd been working with had something called SEO being done. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about it, um, but she said she was spending a lot of money. And so I just started investigating into it and not really paying too much attention, just more learning. And then a person from my church came up to me and said that he completely lost his website. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. So he was actually my first paid guy and i so i learned seo from negative seo to try or penalty seo to try to get his insurance company website back so i learned from the penalty side and then learned obviously once you clean it up you have to do the stuff in reverse and the positive side to bring it back so that's how i learned kind of forced me into what i tell people got it got it so i mean what made, what made you what part of it made you so interested about it um, I think it was just the unknown. I mean, it, at, at, at that time, there was no, obviously, YouTube. There was no instruction anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are some people that had some digital marketing books, but they were more around emailing and stuff like that. Um, matter of fact, my web experience were more intranet instead of oh, intranet. Yeah. So mm -hmm. A lot of the websites that I was building was for internal companies to use for their staff and, and suppliers and stuff like that. So. I think that was the most intriguing when it was something brand new and you had to actually figure something out mm -hmm. um, by testing. And that's testing is my favorite part of SEO, um, as a lot of people know. So mm -hmm. I think that's what kept me interested even still today that, you know, something happened and I need to figure out how and why and then fix it. 
Love that, love that. Now that you, you've become over 12 years of experience in it, and now you speak at actual conferences now, and the most recent one you spoke at, I believe I, I was chatting with you, it was a Mastermind in Hell, right? Um, I'm curious, what was your topic about at that conference? Um, my topic was about um, how advanced schema can destroy a web page. Got it. Um, doing it by doing it wrong. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think I've proven enough times that advanced schema is a ranking signal. Mm -hmm. I've got an entire web website that ranks with just schema on it. But this one was kind of interesting because for two and a half months, I was trying to figure out why this page was crashing. Mm -hmm. And I never looked at the schema, never even thought to look at the schema. Uh -huh. So basically, I had the, or me, I take the blame for it. I had the wrong service schema on the wrong page. Oh. So for instance, it's like having a swimming pool repairman schema on a plumber's page. Oh. It was two completely different services. Mm -hmm. And Google just said, well, wait a minute. Not only am I confused, but I'm not even going to deal with it. So I lost about 950 keywords in about three and a half months. Whoa. By the time I found it, it was too late to fix it. I'd already started down. I was already done. So, so my talk at the um, mastermind was basically, matter of fact, that Monday before I just lost my last 10 keywords I was tracking on that one page. So, so yeah, it was kind of, you know, quasi perfect timing, but you know, it wasn't a, ma it wasn't a hack thing. So it wasn't mm -hmm. anything like black hat somebody could do to somebody else. And mm -hmm. it was just a shit mistake, you know, mm -hmm. um, somebody i'll take the blame selected the wrong page for the wrong schema and that was it and it was um kind of mind-blowing so really be careful guys be careful guys thank you for sharing that i mean i want to go into something and for those that don't know this is the second time terry's been on and we talked about advanced schema in his first episode so be sure to check that out it's about five episodes ago so we want to be sure to check that whole episode out loud well we're good but today we're gonna to be talking about something we also want to talk about the first time it's something called pr stacking and siloing first off with i want to get into pr stacking first can you like really explain the concept of press release stacking strategy and like maybe why it's an effective method um, I think I think the biggest thing for me was, um, you know, one of my bottlenecks in my SOPs before was PRs, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you'd, you'd get them written, you'd get them approved, you get them, you know, syndicated, and then, you know, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten weeks later, they're gone, and you have to do it again, and then you have to do it again. Mm -hmm. And so I started getting frustrated by that. And I do a lot of stacking with Google properties and Microsoft properties and everything else. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, okay, let's try this. Let's try to do something that's completely different with press releases. Mm -hmm. So my press releases all start with a blog post. So, you know, I'll take that press release. I'll make it a um, blog post on the website that I'm actually doing the press release for. Okay. And then in that blog post, I can control those and those anchor links. So I can do a direct anchor link to the, you know, water heater page. I can do a direct anchor leak to the, you know, tankless hot water heater page. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where it starts. And so I publish that page, I get that URL, and then I go do a bit, what I just basically, a lot of people are now starting to get the hang of, but Google Doc, a public Google Doc. If you guys aren't using public Google Docs and public Google Sheets, mm -hmm. you're missing the boat. So I take that same press release, I change a couple paragraphs, and then I do a public Google Doc. Mm -hmm. with that press release that press release has the link back to my blog post so it's kind of like tier one tier two or two okay. tier ones if i want to hack it that way and then i go and write the the initial press release so the initial press release i usually write is with uh you know quantum and now it's called uh, signal genesis um and only because i don't get three or four or five hundred links from that press release i get mm -hmm. a minimal mm -hmm. amount that now I can go out and stack those press releases from that initial one. So that initial one has links to the blog post and it has links to the Google Doc, but they're um, branded links. So, you know, it's always the okay. brand okay. on the very first, very first level. I'm teaching you guys what to use for stacking. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, guys, listen. <laughs> So, and then, so after I get all the URLs for the first press release, I put all those URLs in the public Google Doc in a column, and I put all those URLs in the same as schema on the blog post. 
Okay, then I take a second press release and I do a press release for, you know, I've done them through EIN Newswire, AB Newswire. The middle press release in this system doesn't really make that big of a difference. But I, I use, because this can get expensive. So my middle press release service is probably the cheapest. You know, I can probably get a cheap press release for 30, 40 bucks. You know, all I want is the links. So I do another press release and now I'm linking to the top five links of the first one. So I'll put all those 40 or 50, whatever URLs I get, I'll throw them into Ahrefs and I'll pick the top four or five that have the most power. And those will be my links to the second press release. The second press release doesn't send anything to the blog post or to the Google Doc. Okay. It's a true tier two, if you want to call it that. Okay. Okay. Just pointing up to the tier one, which is that first press release. And then those anchors are typically branded keywords. So like, um, you know, Saltera web design or whatever. So it's a brand plus a keyword pointing to the first press release. So, and then I wait for all of those links to come back. Now we're talking typically three or 400. Now we're getting into the realm of the big ones. So I'll take all those links again. I'll put them in the Google doc. I'll put them in the same as schema on the blog post. And then I'll do the final press release. The final press release is always Randy's. Um, Randy Rohde, who you had on last week, 38 digital. My, my favorite press release. And there's a few reasons why. Um, one of the biggest reasons is, is that you know, he also boosts these things. So in the package that I get, so mm -hmm. um, he'll also throw a whole bunch of links at the back end of his. But the biggest thing about his press release system is now I can point to the Google Doc. I can point to the top five because this is I basically do two press releases in his. It's twice the size, mm -hmm. so it might be fifteen hundred words instead of eight hundred, like the first two were because it gives me more internal linking opportunity. I'm a big believer in the more content on a page, the more links you can have. Okay. So if you have 300 words and 10 links, you're draining everything there is on that page gone. But if you mm. have 3000 words and 10 links, now you've got enough, you know, kind of content to power it through. So anyway, so the third press release now goes up to and, and starts getting the second and the Google Docs and the Google Drive. And those are exact. Those are exact domains or exact keyword anchors. So, you know, hot water heater, tankless hot water heater. Um, and then you just sit back and watch this thing work. So this stacking the press releases are super powerful for, I've, I, I, one of my presentations I did at Rockstars, I took a branded map, okay. just a branded DMB, and I got it ranking for a service map system. And my GMB didn't even mention that service. So for instance, you know, Saltera Web to Saltera's GMB, I got ranked in a plumbing service GMB system, you know, local plumber near me or plumber marketing or anything around plumbers. And I don't mention plumbers on my GMB at all. No services, no GMB posts, nothing. So just through the power of stacking those press releases, I was able to create new opportunity for my GMB. If that makes sense. So. Damn! <laughs> Man. And of course, it freaking blew up the freaking keywords I was going after as far as ranking. That, that's so, crazy. Here's, here's, the, here's the secret of all this stuff. So now I have all this system, and if I keep these, remember, all these links are in my public Google Doc. It's usually about 900 referring domains are in the public Google Doc. Okay. And they're in a column because if they're in a column, Google doesn't do their stupid little redirect, it's a direct link. And then I also have all those um, referring domains in my same as schema on that blog post. So uh -huh. there's a couple things I do from now. So now if I'm a month later, you know, if I'm talking to my link team, I'll go, hey, guys, let's throw a couple links at that public Google Doc just to keep all those press releases going. OK, so okay. But I'm basically instead of sending a thousand links to all these different URLs, I'm sending a couple three to the main Google Doc and it's yeah. feeding the press releases. So as far as link use, whatever people want to call it. But another big secret is if I ever want to change those anchor texts on the blog post, that there's that's my choice. So if my hot water heater keyword went up high enough to where now I want to include a different keyword in there, I can uh -huh. do that without going back and changing any of the press releases. I control all the anchor text at the tier one level. 
that's yeah. the cool thing about it. So, and that's kind of the stacking press releases. I've taught this, you know, I've been teaching this for about a year. Um, it, but fair warning, it's expensive. It can, yeah. it, it can cost you six, seven, eight hundred bucks for one stack, you know, right. but you really only need to do one yep, yep. <laughs> for most clients, you know. So, you know, obviously, I encourage people to do, you know, maybe one stack for the main keywords in a brand, but then maybe throw a couple in, you know, other press releases. You don't have to do a full stack, mm -hmm. but, you yeah. know. And that's the nice thing. As long as you got that block, that Google Doc URL, you can mm -hmm. send. You can do another press release six months from now and put that Google Doc URL, and you just fed all those URLs again. So I've got I've got press releases out there that are over a year and two months, 12, 13 months old, still live, still still out there pumping away. So. Man, guys, that was a huge nod bomb there. You gotta have rewind, take notes, and catch that all again. So, I, so that how long does this actually take then? Because I mean, how soon are you doing each stack? So once something's live, you just go publish a new one, publish yeah, a new one. Yeah, the biggest thing is you gotta you gotta collect the URLs. Okay, so, okay, okay. Um, you know, and so however long that takes, so you know, it could be three, maybe four weeks for the whole cycle to go. And then you know, I do indexing stuff. I put them all up and. You know omega and a couple different indexes we use just to help get them all indexed and stuff but um but yeah so that's the only time frame is just waiting for the next press release to give you the the live urls that you can go out and start doing stuff with so, got it got it so so let's talk about some of the resources then because you talked about randy roadies uh, that's kind of your main one so what are some of the like the middle tiers that you guys are doing uh, and other services because I mean, do you actually mix up services or do you just kind yeah. of keep using the same ones Oh, yeah, we mix them up. You know, like I said, EIN Newswire, AB Newswire. Um, Madges is in the same line as 38 Digital. Um, so Madges would be, I think, Mag Magic PR, I think. So yeah, Magic name. PR. Um, so Magic PR would be at the same level as Randy's would be. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't use that as a middle. I would use that as an anchor. Mm -hmm. um, but they're like EIN, AB Newswire. EIN, you'll get you'll get your um, links in 24 hours. I mean, it's the fastest one out there. So that's the reason why I typically will use that as my center tier. Okay. You know, because if you do, if you look at the process, the center tier is the one that actually takes the most time. So, okay. um, you know, and then the third one is not so much time as far as you just anchor into the next level. So, um, but it it works great. You know, the the anchor text type of system is one that. You know, Clint, Clint has, Clint's been teaching this for a long time. I just took it and did it in a press release size mm -hmm. instead of you know, through link building type stuff, but it is link building, you know, so, but I do like that you get so many embeds, you know, mm -hmm. I can do so many GMB links, you know, it's, I can treat them like any other press release, but I'm just stacking on top. Love it, love it. So you also mentioned something about someone that no one has really openly talked about. It's like Google stacking and using Google public docs. I mean, uh, I know like, uh, I mean, I'm familiar with them, but for those that don't know about it in the audience, can you explain why you're putting this into like a Google doc or are you using like even Google Sheets or anything like that? Um, yeah, for the press releases, we use Google docs. There's a lot of stuff we use Google Sheets for. Um, anything that I can send links to that has the name Google in it, I'm going to abuse. And so, you know, I mean, I, I've got, you know, I, I, that's the way I kind of get site maps. You know, when people have a hard time getting pages indexed on their website, a lot of secrets you can do is go up and do a public Google doc and name it Salterra sitemap and put all your URLs in there and send a couple links to it. Google will read it. So, you know, it's just, you know, it's a tool that Google gives us that, you know, I believe that isn't used enough by SEOs. You know, Got so it. it's a free public document that you can pretty much do anything with. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people do a lot of testing. A lot of people, you know, they do a lot of hidden div testing and stuff like that. You, you know, the whole idea with the Google Doc is you don't want to abuse it as far as doing stupid shit to it. But as far mm -hmm. as sending links to it, you know, there's GSAs, there's all kinds of stuff you can just send to the Google Doc and, or the Google Sheet. So, um, but I've been doing that with press releases for about a year and a half, just because mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of store them somewhere for my yeah. staff. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, hey, let's make this public and send some links to it and see what happens. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, and I, I, a lot of this is from Brian Katie. There's people out there that really do some cool stuff around sheets and docs. 
Excellent. Love that. I love it. So, I mean, how about um, you also kind of mentioned like uh, like Azure and Google Drive stacking for those of the people that caught that. Like, what what is that? What is, what what do you, what's happening there? Um, again, Google Stacks is Google properties that they give us, and you know the Google Sheets, Google you know all, all of them, you know Google Slides, all that stuff, Google Calendar, and so a stack we do brand stack. So you know the very first month of a new client, I'll do a brand stack, and it really doesn't get into keywords so much as the brand name, the address, mm -hmm. the phone number, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. so that's what a, that's what a lot of times we'll use as a tier one to send brand links to the homepage. Um, just because it's a very safe, safe place. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, especially if you're trying out a new link service or you got a new, you know, hey, try this thing out. We'll typically use a Google site for that instead of a, you know, regular website, some kind of buffer. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, there's all kinds of cloud stacking software out there. We, we like Yaks, you know, mm -hmm. shout out to Yaks. Um, but anything that can do cloud stacking and also give us those links in the cloud. So, um you know, there, there's some different things about cloud stacking and how you can use it and, and not use it. But I think the biggest thing is, is it's a very reasonable cost opportunity for people. To do. So Got it. I wish we had Google stacks when I first started. So yep. because they're cheap, they're mm -hmm. easy to build, you know, just, you know, you can build out 10 or 12 of them, 15 of them, depending on what you want to do, you know, and you can build a different sheet for, you know, a different sheet for each different keyword or page and include all those in the business site so mm -hmm. um, or the google site so yeah there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it and that's what um that's kind of like the you know I, I encourage people to look at stacks very seriously same with iftt if you you know hopefully yeah, you're yeah. blogging yep, um, yep but if you're blogging you need a syndication network yep so a lot of people say oh those don't work well a link is a link <laughs> yep yep <laughs> you know I'm right now a link is a link so that's the biggest thing Love that. And for those that didn't catch that, Yex, uh, Yex is um, from Jesper. Jes Jesper, right? Jes Jesper, is, uh, he's actually a was a past guest as well. So be sure to check out his episode to learn more about Yex and uh, all about that the cloud stacking system. All right. So that's enough about P uh, press releases that we have. Um, uh, I mean, that's such a great way of like strategy of like how you do press releases i mean we we've last week you guys we've talked about like how we should write them and and um you know how much how often we should publish them and oh, actually i'm curious like how often are you publishing these are you just publishing these left and right or you're getting because you know it's just to get expensive are you just doing one per main keyword for a client yeah, well, basically we do we do one per one main one per client one main so, oh one main one per client Okay. So, because I can control the blog post and the anchors within the blog post, oh. I can even add another 800 words to the blog post and do different anchors. Oh. Because, I, because I control that, you know, top of the point, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can kind of use that over and over and over again. So, Got it. But I do think that people should just do a one press release, um, you know, to boost up an individual location, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling for a keyword uh, for your business in Phoenix, you know, do a, do a press release around that keyword and make it all towards the map. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think, I think those need to be done at least once a quarter, but you know, but then those, you know, like I said, 40, 50 bucks per press release, you don't need to yep. get super expensive on the, on the interim one, you know, spend the money on the main one. Cause the main mm -hmm. one, you'll be, you'll be surprised how, how often you can feed this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, cause like I said, those, the, the press releases will last as long as they still have stuff coming into it, whether it be links, whether it be, you know, they just fall off when they just became dormant. That's typically what happens. So, Love you know, that. You know, Randy and Madge will get the, you get the yahoos and you get the, yep. you get the main suckers and those now go into your link sheet for your link building team. Yep. You know, so yep. You yep. want to be links to all that stuff. Love it, love it. I, I didn't catch this. So I was like, yeah, so you can always update that one page that you send the majority of your links to. Um, and you said you're spending about $800. And so how much kind of, how many links are you possibly getting? Like um, after end of a campaign, how many do you end up with? Anywhere you between, you know, in, and again, it can, it can fluctuate because yeah. it, you'll even start seeing more later. But I think the least we've seen is about 900 referring domains oh. to 1,200 referring domains. So, um and again, you know, you keep checking that you want to keep yep. going back and checking, um, because if you get 
20 or 30 more referring domains, you want to put those links in the Google Doc and in the same as in the schema. So you want to try to keep it up as yeah. much as possible. Um, you know, we, we even, in the first test we did, we even went so far as to remove links that had fallen off. And we found that that was just a complete utter waste of time. It didn't affect any ranking whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So if 20 of the PR links decided to fall off, that we didn't see a point of going back now and updating the Google Doc in the same as schema. Mm -hmm. Didn't see. But it, we do like going back and adding new, as long as it's a big enough bulk. If we get one or two more referring domains, I'm not going to have the staff go in and do all that work. Yep, yep. If we get 10 or 20, yeah, we're going to go in and update everything. Like I said, it will grow. Love that, guys. And did you catch that? You get about 900 referring uh, domains. That's less than a dollar a link, guys. Less than a dollar a link. So if yeah. you guys want to like really, really up your backlinking game, um, strategy where it's not as hard as all is doing all the outreach, I mean, this is just one, one, um, you know, one way to you gain backlinks, some quality backlinks, I would say, too, because you're getting some really, really um, top tier websites there. So that's really, yeah. really cool. Love that, love that. So I want to go into our second portion of the show, which is all about siloing. Can you kind of explain what is siloing for those that don't know what siloing is about? Um, well, siloing, you can look at siloing two ways. Um, mm -hmm. On the public, and it can happen on the public side of a website or on the bot side of the website. So my idea of siloing is directing traffic. You mm -hmm. know, I want people to go to the places I wanted to go, and I want the bots to go to the places I want to go. So... For instance, like if you ever go to my site, you'll see it as soon as you click into the menu system. Mm -hmm. But like for my web design silo, it's only web design. You know, you, you click web design on my website, mm -hmm. on my main mm -hmm. nav, and now all of a sudden you look at my main nav and now it's just website up there. Mm -hmm. You can't even mm -hmm. click back to SEO from my main nav. My silo is that strict. So I'm of the big belief that if somebody's there for web design, whether it be a person or a bot, Mm -hmm. And they're going through all this stuff and they want to see some e-com websites. They want to see some, you know, whatever, all in the web design silo. They don't want to all of a sudden go to SEO. Yeah. Just like, you know, I, I don't want a bot to do that. So, you know, if I'm trying to rank my site, my web design silo, I don't want the bot all of a sudden going over here to the SEO side, you know, yeah. and now mm -hmm. it's gone and does different things, you know. And so, you know, and I think of it very lineal. You know, one bot, and there's probably there's probably tons. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm looking at it. You know, if I'm a bot and I'm going down this page for web design, and I get mm -hmm. done, hey, great! I know all everything I need to know about web design. You yeah. know, next time I come back, maybe I'll hit the internet marketing silo or whatever. So, um, you know, and, and your blog posts are the same way. So my blog posts, the ones that are about web design, they have internal links to web design pages. Yep, yep. They don't have internal link to the SEO pages or email marketing pages. You know, so, um, and I've, I've been doing it that way just because, again, I'm of, I don't like going to a website and now I'm feeling lost because I went down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. So, so I try to make sure that I'm directing traffic the way I want to direct traffic. And I do that through siloing and I can silo through schema for the bots. I can silo mm -hmm. through public side for the public. Um, but it's, it's very strict, you know, mm -hmm. and we've tested being less strict and yeah we it still works it just doesn't doesn't work as as what i call strong mm -hmm. so um you know one of the things that when it comes to internal linking and siloing is it's got to be strong it's got to be you know it's got to it's got to direct people to the direct people and bots to the next thing you want to talk about but mm -hmm. it's got to stay within the same topic so the old days when we could put five H1s on a homepage and one H1 about web design. And all of a sudden I got a homepage category talking about SEO. I got a homepage category talking about internet marketing. H1's an H1. You know, the homepage is now confusing as shit because mm -hmm. Google doesn't know which direction to go or any bot. And then mm -hmm. people will go and say, okay, hey, web design. They click on web design. They expect to go to all the web design stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden, just in this convoluted mess and they're confused, bots are confused. You're not getting the ranks and the crawls that you want to get. You know, all of a sudden, if your SEO pages are doing good, why are you still sending people to the SEO pages as far as, you know, if they push the web design and you push the web design silo by doing new content about web design, mm -hmm. that clusters come in. So okay. you want to boost up one service or product or whatever, cluster it, 
you know, feed it out two or three a day, however you want to feed it out. But now all of a sudden they're coming back and going through the same silo that you're telling them to go to. Mm-hmm. They're not guessing and go, oh, I haven't heard from this website in months. I'm just going to guess where I go. And, and that's why people's rankings typically don't either go up or stay stagnant or go down. So um, that's my biggest thing. Love that. So okay, so you say you do it for you do it for bots and you do it for people. So it's kind of the same structure when you think of you're thinking of the both because you're kind of like saying you want to direct the exact same thing to certain areas, right? So I'm curious about this. So let's say like you have a blog and um and, and you said you also interlink your blogs and you actually kind of silo your blogs. So are you saying that maybe you would like remove like category pages because it would probably link out to different categories, or is that something like as far as you go with um, that structure? Well, the, um, I redirect categories to pages. I, oh, I don't, okay. I don't, so if I have a web design category, it's redirected to the web design page. And then wow. I have snippets at the bottom of the page of all the blogs about web design. Mm-hmm. So for that. Um, but the biggest, the only time that I can see a blog post being around multiple things would be mm-hmm. a press release. So, you know, we will do a press release. And if it mentions web design, we'll send it to the web design yeah. page. If it mentions SEO, we'll send it to the SEO page. Because that's not part of our silo as far as a press release or, you know, you can even do, um, you know, we've done blog posts in the past, you know, our top 10 products this year, and Mm -hmm. we'll list them all, you know, and link them all. So, you know, but I'm talking about when you're doing for content marketing, when you're doing for content, um, you know, content clusters, content, whatever you want to call it, siloing, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you really don't want to take it into a different direction. That's going to either stop all that work you've done, you know, mm-hmm. so, or it's going to, you know, cause other work to come into play when you're not ready for that work to come into play yet. If that makes sense. So, got it. Um, you know, I, I, per, like I said, I look at it very linear or, you know, if I'm writing about something, you know, and I want that something that I'm writing about to give me credit, I don't deviate from that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at some of the big bloggers, they don't either, you know, if you, you know, they get very creative in their anchor text, but mm-hmm. their anchor text are still going to the same silo, you know? So, and you can say, Hey, you know, these websites are built for search engine optimization mm-hmm. and that anchor goes to the website page. It doesn't have to go to the SEO. page. So you can still tie them in, mm-hmm. you know, you just don't have to redirect the traffic to a different spot. So to speak. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. All right, guys. If you guys got any questions, please ask them in the live chat while I go down to a few more of my questions that I have here. So when it comes to, uh, are you looking at content siloing and website siloing uh, at two different things? So like, I mean, no. uh, so there's both the same thing. So like when, when you All say, the and, and yeah. they have the, both the same purpose when you're when you think about it. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'm curious, do you get like, how are you, let's say, cause you use the term cluster and like it's, it's what everyone's using, like clustering, um, like that type of content. So are you using like, clustering keywords within your, how you pick, how you interlink them and like how you're creating your silos. Is that how you're doing it? Or is it just like you said, or is it just very linear? And you said, well, if it's just about web design and we're just talking about web design, web hosting, web servers, uh, webmasters, and you know, stuff like that. Um, it, it, again, they're all topic relevant. So okay, like topics, we're, okay. we just, we're getting ready to do a content cluster um, for um, all around WordPress web design. So we're going to do some WordPress versus Joomla, WordPress versus Drupal. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to do a whole, probably, it's going to probably be about 35 articles just around WordPress and the advantages of so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're doing that because we're actually starting a second web design division that's going to focus more on custom development of WordPress, Mm -hmm. you know, getting Mm -hmm. into the custom themes, custom plugins, you know, just, just kind of like a new division, a spinoff of our web design side. So, um, but yeah, the biggest thing is, is again, you know, we use keyword Cupid to cluster. There's okay. all kinds of clustering okay. tools out there. So yep. you just do up, go up and do a bunch of keyword research, mm-hmm. take out all the keywords that don't matter, throw in a clustering tool mm-hmm. and it'll tell you what you need to, what you need to write about. Yep. yep. Um, you know, I've been teaching people how to do that in chat GPT, mm-hmm. you know, and then turn around and be able to pump content through Google sheets out to the website. There's all kinds of things you can do once you get the cluster done. Um, but yeah, the cluster, uh, I'm a, I, I love clusters and we, we've been doing clusters on the affiliate side for years or not years, maybe a year and a half, two years. Um, but we've only recently started about a year ago in the local side. So, oh. but it's also an upcharge every month. 
Yep, yep, so, yep. You know, my plumber will pay me 600 bucks to do a content cluster around tankless hot water heaters. You know, that, Love that. that. <laughs> All right, let me look at the dog. Yeah. All right, all right. Oh man, guys, that's some crazy stuff that we have going on here. We have so we've been talking about PR stacking, and we have a whole strategy laid out for us. Be sure to rewind and check that out. We want to, and now we're talking about the topic of clustering. And when it comes to uh, clustering and and siloing, and and you talked about, you said Chat GPT. We don't really talk about that much here in Chat GPT. I kind of like there's so much content out there on Chat GPT that I kind of like really don't put it on the show. But you said you actually kind of use it recently to help you out with as you said clustering or um, siloing and what what are you doing there maybe you can quick tip for those that want to that use chat gpt on your prompts there um i think the biggest thing you know around the especially around the content is you can chat gpt is really good at telling you entities it's really good about telling you semantic seo terms mm -hmm. um it, it helps you kind of give you ideas on what should be included in content so um you know again it's just you know, I, it's a great tool as far as we, we use it a lot for, like I said, new ideas, um, you know, write, you know, 10 different titles, 10 different descriptions, that type mm -hmm. of thing, you know, so we can pick and choose. Um, we don't typically use it for a lot of page content, or even mm -hmm. though we're testing a lot right now. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the other, like coming up with, you know, 20 different anchor texts around the term hot water heater. It's great at that. I mean, it's freaking, you know, for me to do that, I could do it. But yeah, I would, I would have to go through some spreadsheets and say, oh, yeah. that sounds good. It sounds good. You know, but um, that's where I think the advantage is of ChatGPT. I also think that ChatGPT needs to know what it's talking about because you have to yep. check it. Yep, it yep. will guess, you know. So, you know, I had a plumber send me an article because I'm trying to teach his daughter how to do ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Send me this article about, you know, I'm teaching my 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 clients to go after just write about their competitors you know mm -hmm. who are the top five plumbers or top 10 plumbers in dallas texas and ah, yeah, gpt did good for about the first five but the other the bottom five <laughs> two of them weren't even in dallas texas so oh, again okay. it's still you know and you also got to remember too it's the data is what a year and a half old so if you're a brand new plumber that's 10 months old it doesn't even know you exist mm -hmm. so you gotta remember too that that about ChatGPT. So, um, but like I said, it, it's great at titles, it's great at descriptions, you know, it's great at and for the ideas, all that stuff. You know, it is good at writing press releases. Oh yeah. So there you go. Write good releases. All right, guys. There goes our little bit about ChatGPT. For those that want to know a little bit more about it, um, I'm curious now. When, when it comes to siloing, are you? I mean, it can be technical, right? You're doing you're doing the actual linking with the steps and how you the design of it, the user experience. Are you doing anything uh, with on the schema side of things on trying to create these silos? And like, what is that? Like, how are you how are you like doing that? Yeah, same thing. Same our same, our schema follows the regular silo of the website. So our web design service schema only mentions the web design pages. Um, as far as the same oh, okay, ads. Okay. Now, we'll mention, obviously, um, knows about. Yeah, we know about SEO, all the stuff, the different knows abouts. Um, it'll do all the abouts and mentions for the other product. But as far as same as, we keep it very rigid. Mm -hmm. So, um, in my opinion, same as is the most important thing in schema. Wow. So, um, you know, because that's where you can, you can tie it all together. So... You know, if, if you if you Google yourself and you see all these first eight or ten pages full of stuff that is about you, mm -hmm. those are all the same as, you know, that's power. That's bringing yep, in yep, all yep. the stuff in Google into one spot, which is the which is the design of advanced schema. And just so Google doesn't have to search for it, they don't have to guess. You know, they know Paul does this. They know Paul mm -hmm. does this. They know Paul does this. It's all in the schema, you know. And that's where that's where it kind of sets itself apart as far as when it gets into the siloing, because you don't want to have same as here's my SEO page, here's my internet marketing page, here's my email marketing page. Mm -hmm. You know, keep it rigid. You know, keep it strong. Love that, love that. Dropping all these knowledge bombs. And if you guys got questions, please ask them in the live chat, and I will address them in the order that they received. But I, uh, the last topic I want to talk about today is something that you've launching, you are launching that we didn't know about on your first time on here. Is you're launching a new course, and this new course is coming out very, very soon, right? Um, it's actually a class. I'm not oh, going to do a class. Oh, okay, I'm okay, do, okay. I'm do a live interactive class. Um, oh. Yeah, starts this month or in July. 
Um, hold on, I had it here. Hold on, let me bring it up. Yeah, I believe it's um, in July. <laughs> Probably yeah. what I saw. July. Um, let me see here. I want to, I want you to make sure we get that link out to everyone. I'm gonna go put it in the live chat here. We have um, it's yeah. So it um the, the it's on it's on six Tuesdays. So it's gonna be a six week class. The first one's July 18th. Um, only ten people. Um, oh. I'm keeping it small. I'm keeping it interactive. Um, I'm gonna basically and the reason. Let me go back a little bit. The reason I decided to do this mm -hmm. in the month of June, I did 17 paid audits. And uh -huh. every single one of them was on page problem. Everyone uh -huh. wasn't linking, wasn't anything else. It was all on page. And mm -hmm. so if, if, if you get good at on page and set your foundation up strong, you, you're, you've solved 90% of your problems, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, the bad thing is, is that people it's some of the on page I saw was just horrendous. You know, some of the, some of the things people learn on Facebook, they actually don't test. They just do to their website. And it's just, you know, so I just figured, I said, all right, fine. I've been doing this, you know, for whatever, teaching this. It's time just now to teach a formal class. So mm -hmm. we're going to do six Tuesdays and then six Fridays or Q&As to, you know, come back on and figure out, you know, what the heck people are going to do. And there's going to be assignments. There's going to be homework. There's going to be, um, you know, I'm going to hold people accountable. You know, I, mm -hmm. and I placed it so I didn't have the people that weren't going to take it seriously. Yep. You know, I've had people say, oh, wow, it's expensive. It's expensive because if you pay that much money, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line, you know. So, and I don't want to waste my time if you're not going to do it. That's my deal. I'm not doing it any <laughs> love that love that we have a lot of people here in the live chat i didn't see any questions come in but we have uh we have here we have michael brian skyler tmr and digitalier clint clint says um professor terry too bad he's navy samuels so oh, man oh man <laughs> poor clint poor clint yeah. Oh guys. All right guys, I didn't see any I didn't see any other questions come out here and we're coming we're pretty much at time. So I wanted to go ahead and um ask you that's the last question that I asked all my SEO professionals to come on board here. And um for those that want to I mean obviously if they want to get into uh, SEO and get to the, get become a very serious about it, they can take your course. But what's some last last piece of advice that you can give to them if they want to get into the industry? Um test you know, I mean, if you've got to test, you've got to build your own site, you've got to go out and start learning what works, what doesn't work. Um, I hate posts that, hey, I just got a new client, where do I start? You know, Ooh. and just, you know, and don't hurt people. You know, if you don't know what you're doing, don't take their money. Um, yep, yep. You know, at least find out the basics of how to set up a website, the basics of, you know, how to do a page. Um, you know, there's very basics that you have to do, but the biggest thing is get your own damn website, test it, rank it, learn how to do this shit and then go sell it. You know, otherwise you're doing it backwards and you're going to hurt people. And then people like me and Brian and Clint are going to have to fix the shit you did. So, <laughs> sorry. I, I get pretty brutal with it. I, I get, we all get frustrated seeing the crap yeah, that we yeah. get. You know, I get people that call me damn near in tears. So they've spent a literal fortune and they're no better off than they were when they started. And you and I both know how that feels. It sucks, you know? So, um, yeah, just take it seriously. You can make a lot of money doing this, but you've got to do it right. You've got to take care of people. You know, if you don't know, get to conferences, get to masterminds, ask questions, you know, but don't sit there and listen to a Facebook group and go, Hide, go do seven, eight, seven hidden H ones on your homepage and think that's going to work. Doesn't. So. Love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And for um for this episode to feel complete for you, um and please share any last um any last comments and how people can get a hold of you. Um, just get a hold of me through SalteraSite.com um or Facebook. Um, I, I'm actually being pretty good in Facebook now. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> Brian Cato, come to SEO spring training. It will be the first week in April next year. Um, and, but we are doing some masterminds that we're getting ready to announce. So there's all kinds of ways out there to get out there and learn from the people that do this every day. And so, you know, make the investment, you know, get serious about it and just freaking go out and kill it. You know, that's all there is to it. So. Love it. Love it. Everyone let's give a round of applause.
All right, Terry, can you hold on for one quick second while I sign off here? Just one quick second. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting not that notification bell because next week is my three-year anniversary episode, and I'm going to be trying something different. I'm going to be interviewing myself the exact same way I introduce my guests. So it's going to be tricky, but I think I can pull it off. So be sure to check that out, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!